In this presentation, we're going to look at probability distributions with R. This corresponds to an introduction to statistics and probability undergraduate course that many people will be undertaking. Now, this particular example deals with the exponential distribution, which is a continuous probability distribution. So here we go. A machine is said to have a mean failure-free lifetime of 200 hours. It is assumed that the failure-free lifetimes of the machines have an exponential distribution. Okay, so we have an exponential distribution with mean uh, uh, lambda equals 2000. So, what is the probability that the machines will last at least 1000 hours, at least 1500 hours, less than 800 hours, and between 1300 hours and 1800 hours? It's a very straightforward enough question. So just let's get some background on this. The, an exponential random variable x is specified with a rate parameter lambda, okay, and there we go, x is exponential. So the expected value of x is computed with the following formula, the expected value of x equals 1 over lambda. Now that's relevant because we are told what the mean is, okay, that's 2000, so the rate parameter is 1 over that, 1 over lambda. I'm just going to specify it as lambda on an ongoing basis and we would divide, derive the rate parameter from that. I'll show you what I mean when we get to it. That's uh, some material there about the probability density function. I'll sort of skip that because it's not really that important and I've covered the main topics there. So we're going to uh, complement our analysis with uh, some gr uh, graphical procedures. And what I'm going to do is show the density curve and shaded areas of the density curve that correspond to the probabilities that we are looking for. Uh, the tool I'm going to use for this is the Desk Tools R package, which is Tools for Descriptive Statistics. Very interesting package, particularly if a uh, useful complement to exploratory data analysis and descriptive statistics and so on. A lot of good material here for undergraduate statistics courses to complement other modules. The maintainer is Andre Signorelli. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but there's also quite a few other contributors as well, and this is great work and we thank them all. So I'm just gonna load it up there, library desk tools, okay? Now there's one particular command of that I'm going to use, it's called shade, and you will see that shortly. So exercise one, at least 1,000 hours. The probability of the failure-free lifetimes is at least 1,000 hours. So that's the probability of X greater than or equal to 1,000. So there I'm going to specify lambda as 2,000, okay? Now, just let's get started, uh, get, over the, uh, get used to the basics first off. The cumulative distribution function, this is the probability of X less than or equal to a certain value. Here it's the probability of X less than or equal to 1,000. It's not what we're looking for. This is not the full answer. But the command here is P uh, for the cumulative distribution function and EXP to specify the exponential distribution. Okay. That's the value of interest, 1000. And the argument there is rate equal to. Okay. And I have specified that to 1 over lambda where I have defined lambda previously. So I'm just going to stick with this. But I just was told lambda in the question, so I'm just going to specify lambda, and then when I ask for the rate parameter, I'll just specify 1 over lambda. And I'm going to continue to do that the whole way through. Now that would work out to be 39%, 0 0.3934, but what we're asked for is a complement of that, probability of x greater than or equal to 1000. So essentially it's the complement of that, so 1 minus pexp of 1000 with the rate parameter, 1 over lambda, and there we go, what do we get? 60%, 0 0.6065307. So this is the code that we can use to create the plots that you're about to see shortly. So the standard command in base R is curve, okay? And this will curve the density function of x when the rate parameter is 1 over lambda over this range of values, 0 to 6,000, okay? I just picked 6,000, really, because it just that's a sort of informed decision about what would be the right range of values. 
main puts in the title actually i don't really need paste there you can knock that out but it's the, the exponential distribution pdf probability density function and a couple of more commands there besides that you can try out essentially the first three lines are the main three lines to be honest with you so the desk tools allows me to use shade okay now it's something very similar here it allows me to shade in parts of the curve so I the question is from zero the problem the question is asks me for le, uh, greater than 1000 and uh, so I'm going to just set up separate my interval into two parts 0 to 1000 and 1000 to 6000 I'm going to have blue and red blue and a density a shading density of 1000 and also 45 let's just have a look at that there you can just take a moment there pause pause the video and you can write that down now i'm going to use the same code or variations of the same code on an ongoing basis there's quite a lot there but you can use this code for anything normal distribution so on any continuous distribution so that's what it looks like there uh, the probability of x greater than 1000 corresponds to this red shaded area here okay and you can sort of see that it corresponds to about 60 percent now, just to be clear, the I didn't actually explicitly specify Y limits, but it just sort of had picked out uh, that it should be around zero, but I didn't actually specify it. So that's not something that is checked 100%. Uh, also, it does, I just sort of curtailed it at 6,000 because I think that's just about right, but actually it could sort of taper off more. So just, you know, that's you can go a little bit further with it than what I have there okay so yeah the red area corresponds to the probability of X greater than 1000 okay and I just arbitrarily cut it off at 6000 but it could go on further you can make it 10,000 if you want so exercise 2 the probability of failure free lifetimes is at least 1500 now this is very similar to what I've just done there previously just what the only thing I'm going to do differently is use this command here this is an argument here lower tail lower dot tail equals false which is to say upper tail and it just specifies the probability of x greater than some value now this is very specific for the continuous distributions it will work for discrete distributions but just be careful with it uh, have a look at videos where i would deal with this and mention it because it does actually have implications about the sample uh, points that you're talking about there anyway just be careful with it with discrete distributions uh 0 0.47 to 3666 okay that's the code again uh this is almost ex this is exactly what i've used there previously and i've just changed this to 1500 okay there we have it there okay you just notice there it's at 1500 here on the x-axis Exercise 3, probability that failure-free lifetimes is less than 800 hours. Very straightforward here. Very easy, straightforward question. Uh, PEXP, 800 rate parameter equals 1 over lambda. So it's 32%, 0 0.32968. That's the code. I've just switched the order here. That's all I've done. So I just uh, changed the color order and the density order. Also, I've just changed the breaks okay so just watch out for that but yeah the main difference here is the color order and the density order but just because what i'm the probability i'm interested in is i'm just going to have that at a very intense red that's it there and that corresponds to a probability of about 32 percent a little bit deceptive when you're trying to figure out the areas of these relative areas of these curves particularly as they're not 100 percent matched uh, the axes are not 100% matched to zero and the upper and lower bounds. But anyway, they're good enough, but they're not perfect. Just watch out for that. Probability that failure-free lifetimes is between 1,300 hours and 1,800 hours. Okay, so we just cal uh, calculate the probability distribution function. Sorry, the cumulative distribution function of 1,800 hours and subtract 1,300 hours. The cumulative distribution for 1,300 hours. 
Just remember that the exponential distribution is a continuous distribution, so this type of calculation is fine. For discrete random variables, you have to be a bit more careful about the sample points. So it corresponds to 11%, 0 0.1154761. And this is exactly like what we had before. Okay, here I have three intervals, 0 to 1300. 1,300 to 1,800, and 1,800 to my arbitrarily selected upper threshold of 6,000. And I have blue, red, blue, and intensity, density even, 10, 45, 10. Okay, so there we go there. So that's the probability of the uh, what I'm interested in, this interval here. It's about 10%, sorry, 11.5%, and that is how we would sketch it there. Yep, that's it. Okay, we'll leave it there.